Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we're going to be talking about code blocks. What exactly is code blocks? Well, it is a free, open source C, C++, and Fortran IDE, and most importantly, it's not dead. Yeah, because honestly, I thought it was, and for very good reason. I will show that in just a minute. Uh, but you can see here, code blocks 25.03 was very recently released. Now, this is actually a chronological numbering system. So this 2503 refers to the year 2025 and 03 being March, specifically March the 30th. So just over a month ago, there was a new release of code blocks. And I'm going to show you when the last release was. So you get an idea of exactly why I thought this IDE was dead. So this is your typical IDE it does things like code completion, project management, uh, building, and so on. The key strengths of code blocks is it's really small. It's very simple to use. So basically, I just downloaded this zip file extract it out this zip file includes mingw as an option which is a uh, windows version of gcc so you can get up and going with c++ development super simple so this resulted in code blocks being used for a ton of tutorials early on so i'm going to go ahead we'll just create a new project right here and you can see what i mean so you got here projects such as uh, glut or opengl or SFML or SDL and so on. They're all available right there. I'm just gonna go ahead and create a console project to get an idea of what you're dealing with. All right, over here, do C or C++, and then come in here and we'll call this hello code, hello CB. All right, it's a temp folder, in we go and create it. Uh, and here's the key thing. Uh, Codeblocks has integrations with a number of different uh, C++ compilers out there, uh, including Visual Studio, uh, excluding uh, Digital Mars, Sigwin, Watcom, LCC, Intel's compiler, and so on. Uh, so the nice thing is, again, you can just download it and just get going. And then here we are. Our project was just created, and then boom. You may be asking yourself, okay, why are you blinding me, Mike? What's with this not dark mode? Well. There is no dark mode. There is a dark mode for your code editor here only, and there is nothing I can stand less than having partial dark mode theme. So uh, you can't theme the entire UI, literally just uh, this window right here could be made to have dark mode. So that is definitely a downside. Another thing here, you should have code folding. So like you see right here, you got syntax highlighting and so on, but you should also have code completion, but I have I haven't had a lot of success with it. So. Um, Oh, okay, yeah, we are getting some. All right, so you see it does have code completion as well. Uh, one thing you'll notice here as I was able to, to zoom this window in and out like so, uh, one of the things they've done with this particular release is improved high DPI support, which is important because again, a lot of people even have like 14 inch laptops now that have like 4K displays. And if you don't use some kind of a DPI scaling, you don't have high DPI support, it makes these applications more or less useless. Now on top of that, one of the big things about code blocks early on was this aspect. It was entirely modular, full plugin system. So you could add a ton of different plugins, manage them and add them have various different features available via plugins. I'll show you some of the plugin options that are out there in just a minute. Otherwise, the big thing here is this will run on Windows, Mac, Windows. It doesn't cost you a cent and it enables you to basically do a single download and get C++ code up and running and executing very simply. So that is what made it popular for tutorials and such early on. The thing is, since this was popular, we've had a lot of changes. You can now get Visual Studio Code Community Edition, which is free to use up to when you make over a million dollars. C Lion is now available, a dedicated C++ plus IDE from the uh, JetBrains team, which now has a free version available. Visual Studio Code has full C++ support. Qt Creator is an option that is available for free as well uh, under certain circumstances, etc. So definitely the appeal of code blocks has gone away a little bit. So uh, the reason again why we we're talking about today is because it's not dead. Specifically, they had this 25.03 release. Uh, now I said earlier on that this release is um, the first one in a while and the reason why I thought it was dead. Well, the reason I'm saying that specifically is, let's go check out the news. So Codeblocks 25.03 was released and then uh, 25, or sorry, 20.03 was released. So back in March of 2020 was the last binary release. And before that, 17.12. Now, the killer thing here is, again, you see, don't forget the nightlies. And all along, you've been able to, to download the nightly binary versions of it. But the type of people that would be using a tool like this want something turnkey and simple. So I see all kinds of people out there basically saying, why am I stuck on 20, 20 dot blah, 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 20.03? Well, now they've got 25.03. But realistically, if this code block, blocks project really wants to, you know, 
ignite a bit, they're going to need to do releases more often than every five years. Again, nightlies are available if you want. They're available. Uh, but the middle, most people probably don't want to be working with nightlies because, again, it's not necessarily stable or long-term support kind of thing. In terms of features and functionality of CodeBlock, it is open source, GPL v3, no hidden cost, cross-platform on all of those different platforms you see there. It's written in C++ with no interpreted language or proprietary libs. There generally it is quick too, which is another upsell in it. It is extensible through the plugin system. It supports a ton of different compilers, uh, many of which no longer exist. You can import in your Visual Studio or Visual C++ projects. Uh, you can bring in Dev C++ projects. Remember that one? Dev C++, I've heard that in a while. There's also one like Blood C++ or something like that. Um, it does support them as well. It's got project management, full debugger support, and support for um, CDB uh, and GNU GDB as well. Uh, and then details of the interface are available here as well. So those are your primary features of the CodeBlocks IDE. Again, CodeBlocks 25.03 was released. Um, the big things here, new improvements, new features, more stable, further enhancements for high DPI displays. Uh, you can go into the change log and find out everything that you want about what was in this particular change. I'm not going to go into a ton of detail on this one. You got things like options for um, you know C++ 23 support and 26 support, uh, and this 26 is around already, uh, etc. So you see all of those details are available here. Uh, it is available for download. Now, the next thing I'm going to just mention about CodeBlocks, and this is another reason why you thought they were dead, uh, is all their source code is hosted on SourceForge.net, which... Uh, that if you're used to GitHub or GitLabs or any other uh, repository service out there, uh, it's a better experience than this. It, it, this is a terrible site. Uh, it's just, uh, it's a legacy element from the past. It can sometimes make it very misleading about what you are downloading, what particular file you want. So I want all of the files. Getting to them, it's trickier than it should be. This is one of those things to be aware of. You can get to the, how the hell do I get to them? I think I click this one here, if you want the no setup version. Oh yeah, and we also have their website is full of like intermittent annoying ads, another thing to be aware of as well. So you see here, come in, you've got the sources are available here, binaries are available here. So it is an open source project, but it's open source on a platform that is, uh, I don't know, I'm, I'm almost somewhat surprised that SourceForge is still around to be honest. But you see here, you can get this version, which is quite nice. Literally, it is a, a um, transportable version. You could run it on a USB stick. Well, that's for non-setup. So right here, literally just download it, extract it out. And if you need a compiler, download this one, extract it out, and you don't need anything else. So for 500 megabytes, under 500 megabytes, you have a full C++ tool chain. Or for 50 megabytes, you have a code editor that hooks up to your own compiler chain. That is definitely one of the appealing parts with code blocks. It's small. It's felt, it's again, written in C++, it should be quick. Now I mentioned earlier on, this is a plugin driven IDE. Uh, number of the plugins are available here, you get an idea of what is supported. Here's contributed plugins that are there as well. And then we have third party plugins available here at the bottom. Uh, this was very, very cool back in the day. But again, now that we have, this is like, this was the bread and butter of Visual Studio Code, right? So, uh, oh, here's another ad, annoying, annoying ad. So between the hosting company they use for the CodeBlocks website and the SourceForge side of things and the complete lack of product releases, like every five years just isn't gonna cut it. That is why people thought this project was dead. But the project itself, the IDE, uh, again, I, I honestly struggle to recommend it. Uh, it used to be a bit of a no-brainer because it was the free version. Uh, cross-platform version, uh, and it was lightweight. And if you ran it on a potato, you could. But nowadays, we have so many more options that I don't know why I would recommend CodeBlocks over any of them. But I'm curious, do you continue to use CodeBlocks? And if so, why? Would you recommend it? Let us know in the comments down below, and I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.